What's up guys, welcome back to Twin Cherry Studio and today I'm going to show you how to play PlayStation 2 games like this absolute classic Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Ziff for PlayStation 2. I'm currently playing this on my MacBook right now and it's running and playing smooth. I'm going to show you how to install the emulator, how to set it up, how to get things running and how to work out kinks in games that just... Uh, that just when games just aren't running well how to fix them and things like that so sit back relax hit that like button hit that subscribe button and let's just get straight into installing the emulator so for pcsx2 emulator first you want to go to pcsx2.net and download the latest nightly version because the latest stable version is 1.60 and it's very old and the latest nightly version is at 1.7 0.5 something 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 and we download the mac os version because we're using mac and it will download there. Next, we go to our downloads folder. Then we go to our downloads folder and open the zip file by double clicking. And that will give you an application and you're going to, want to copy that into your applications folder. Then go ahead and find PCSX2 in your applications folder and double click it to open. And then it says it cannot be opened because the developer cannot be verified. Click cancel. Go to settings. Go to privacy and security. Scroll all the way down and it will say here. So if you've allowed applications downloaded from App Store and identified developers already in your privacy and security, then you will have this little box here that says PCSX2 was blocked from using because it's not from an identified developer. Click open anyway. Then use your password. And then it's going to ask you again, do you really want to open this application? Yes, you do. Click open. And then PCSX2 should open. And there we go. It has opened. So I'm going to close all of this. So next we go through the basic setups. So I'm going to use the native themes. The system language is going to be set to my language. So I'm going to set it to English just in case. Uh, enable automatic updates. Yes. Click next. And the BIOS, this is where I want to add all my PlayStation 2 BIOS. Now, I've said many times on this channel, I cannot tell you where to get your BIOS from. So I'm going to click Open BIOS Folder. The legal way to obtain your BIOS is by dumping them from your PlayStation 2. There are places on the internet you can find this information. So I'm going to copy and paste my BIOS into here. Click Refresh. And I'm going to choose the American one. And click Next. Then game directories, I'm going to click add. I'm going to put it to where all my games are stored. They're stored here. Click open there. Would you like to scan the directory? I'm going to click yes here. And then click next. And then for controller setup, you can choose the controller type. I'm going to be using the DualShock, obviously. And the control is mapped to the keyboard at the minute. But I have my PS5 controller, so I'm going to want to try and automatically map to that. So I'm going to click Automatic Mapping, map to SDL-0, yes, which is my controller. And then I'm going to click Next, and then click Complete, and we're finished, and everything's ready and set up to go. So as you can see, all of my games are listed here that I've got. So after that initial setup, it's time to do a couple of extra things within the settings to make it run and play a lot better. We go to grid view here. I'll go to tools and then we go to cover downloader to initiate the download loading of the covers. And then you go to the website, the GitHub in the description down below. And you can use one of these two URLs. So we'll start with this one here. I'll copy that and we'll go back to PCSX2. Copy that in, click use serial file names and press start and it will download all the covers for me. Okay. And there we go, we have the covers in 3D, which is fantastic. It looks like I have a nice little game library here and I can make that bigger and smaller the more games that I have. So right now that looks fantastic. And if we go to the settings tab, we'll go down to graphics. And I'm just going to change the display to 16 by 9 widescreen and the FMV aspect ratio to 16 by 9. So it's all in widescreen. And then I'm going to go to the rendering section and change the internal resolution from native 
to 1080p and we can test that out and move that up into 4k as we play more games and see what the system is capable of and then we're also going to go to osd and i'm going to just show some of these on-screen display messages so i'm going to show the fps the cpu usage the statistics and things like that just so that when i'm messing around with the games and I'm getting the game set up i can see which of these graphic settings i can change and make the games look better and play a lot better as well and then if you really want to, you can enable achievements and then you can log into Retro Achievements at RetroAchievements.org. So once you've created your account on RetroAchievements.com, just click log in, type in your new username and password, click log in. And it'll ask you if you want to enable hardcore mode, so if you want to participate in the game-specific leaderboards or if you want to do uh, set times and high scores, then you're going to want hardcore mode on. Uh, however, hardcore mode prevents the usage of save states, cheats and slow down functionality. I like to use save states, I like to use cheats, and I also like to use the slow down functionality sometimes, so I'm not going to enable hardcore mode, but I am going to enable achievements because I do like to have those fun little trophies. I'm going to close that, and that's everything for the initial setup. And now it's time to start playing the games and messing around with the games themselves. So first I'm going to go to uh, 24 the game. I'm going to click, double click that to launch it. Currently the game has no achievements. See all the stats in the top right corner will now help me when it comes to making the game run well. First thing to check is that my controller is set correct correctly. So yes, X is X, circle is circle, square is square, triangle is triangle. So see the game is running at a solid 30 frames per second with a video running at 60 frames per second, which is good. And we see everything is running smooth. Head up top, get into some action. It usually jitters and stutters around this bit here. Keep that down. There we go. Enemies down. Cheeky, cheeky little roll. Oh, there we go. Cheeky roll, cheeky roll. Okay, so now we can mess around with some of the settings as well. So if we go to the settings, go to graphics, this is where I can uh, mess things up a little bit. So let's just make this window smaller. Rendering, and go to 4K, see how that works. Still running 30 frames per second with 4K, which is pretty nice. Uh, then I go to the I go to post processing. Can add some sharpening on there if I want, make things a bit smoother. And FXAA. And then if I wanted to, I can add some uh, filters, scanline filters to make it look a bit more realistic, or like a CRT screen. But I'm not going to do that. That's entirely up to you. And we can mess around with the blending accuracy as well. All still appears to be running smooth on the M3 Pro. So any of this that I'm changing right now, you can change back and forward, see if it makes any differences. So let's bring it back up to like near full screen. And that is still running smooth as butter. Amazing. There we are playing PlayStation 2 games on a MacBook Pro. Now, if you come into any problems with games, so let's say, for example, I'm going to shut this down now shut down the virtual machine let's say i know for a fact that hitman blood money has problems it's artifacts and problems so if i go to pc sx2 wiki and then i look for hitman blood money and i scroll down and i have a look at these configurations it says the game when in game the graphics are really bad and it runs in slow motion constantly so that's for a very bad macbook but one of the problems is visual inaccuracy while hardware mode specifically with red lightning and red shadows but it runs very well but in software mode it runs badly but it gets rid of those shadows so let's have a look so i know that hitman blood money does have these problems so let's go to hitman blood money and let's play it and i'll show you the problems and then i'll show you how to get past those problems and it might not actually even like be worth playing this game at all on this emulator and there is the problem as you can see we have these red artifacting things here that are caused by the emulation something to do with the upscaling i don't 
I don't know, it's something in hardware mode makes it very bad. So then what we have to do is go to settings, go to graphics, and then where it says renderer, automatic by default. Our company on metal, we change it to Vulcan. It has the exact same issue. And we're supposed to be using software emulation, which means that we cannot run it in 4K which means we cannot run it in 1080p, which means we have to run it at the native resolution, and it doesn't look that great, but it does get rid of the issue, which means the game is playable, but we are going to be playing it on the native PS2. Graphics. So that's one way to fix Hitman Blood Money. And that's it, that's PlayStation 2 games on Mac, uh, how to fix any problems that you have with it, how to set it up, and uh, I hope you enjoy playing games on PCSX 2.